Good evening and welcome to Gamel Facebook Live. I say good evening because we're coming from the United Kingdom and it's nine o'clock in the evening here, dark outside in Central American time. I know it's three o'clock in the afternoon. So good afternoon to you all. Whilst we wait for a few people to come online, one of the things I really enjoy about these Facebook Lives, not only are we getting some great nuggets of information, is well we, we're in lockdown in the UK and we don't get much to do in the day and I have a look to see where people have come from and I go on to Google and have a look around have a look at some photographs of the towns and the cities and the states that they come from and the countries and it's just quite exciting really a bit of escapism so we come from the United Kingdom and if you look at the UK go along the south coast right at the bottom in the middle is a little island called the Isle of Wight Directly above that is a city called Southampton, and that's the city where the Titanic sailed out from. We have lots of cruise ships who sail from there. Thankfully, they all return. And if you look at the clock at about 11 o'clock and go five miles north, you come to a beautiful market town called Romsey, and that's where we are at the moment. Loads of history in this town, dates back to the Tudor times. Across the road from here is a public house, we would call it a pub, I guess the Americans and Canadians would call it a bar. That dates back to 1475. And this year the Romsey Abbey, which is a bit like a cathedral, is celebrating 900 years of the place of Christian worship. Romsey is the hometown of the Broadlands Estate. That's where Lord Louis Mountbatten and his family have come from. If you watch The Crown, you'll know Lord Louis Mountbatten. About three summers ago his granddaughter got married in Romsey. The town was closed off particularly outside the shop here and the royal family came along in their cars. Queen and Prince Philip passed. We did invite them in but they were busy. But just imagine the Queen in front of the fire with the corgis round her feet doing some patchwork and quilting. So welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. I want to talk to you about something quite specific. We sometimes get a phone call about this, usually a bit of a panicky phone call. Social media, this question is asked on a number of occasions. And I want to give you a bit of, of an explanation and a theory behind why sometimes this doesn't work properly. And it's skipped stitches. Now Laurie Clayton covered skipped stitches 10 days ago, but this is different skipped stitches. On all the machines apart from the minus, they will, these machines have an amazing thing called a stitch regulator on. And it does exactly what it says on the tin. It regulates the stitch. So here we've just had a bit of a stitch out from a distance. It looks not too bad. Along here we've got normal stitches going along, going along okay. And then suddenly, ooh, look at that. We've got a great big stitch, we've got a gap. Go along a bit more, got another one there, and here as well, we've got another one there, look, excuse my fingernails, I've been gardening all day, and we've got them there. So when we get this phone call in, or somebody contacts us, the first thing we'll say is this, where you've got that gap in your stitching, are there any holes in your quilt sandwich? And as you can see, there are no holes in the quilt sandwich. That's quite good news because we should be able to sort that out really quickly with us. So if you see that there are no holes where the stitches should be. So there's a stitch there, the next stitch is there, nothing in between. Now all this happens by information being fed to the controller or if you're moving it by hand. You've got the X and the Y moving and the Z, or as you call it the Z, is the needle going down and puncturing and forming a stitch in the quilt sandwich. So I'm just going to go around and I'm going to talk to you about how that information gets through to the controller. The machines have two encoders. There's one here and there's one right underneath here. Difficult to get the camera underneath, but it's in there at the back there. And that camera, that encoder, 
it's got a spring on it which pushes it down onto the track a uh, little o-ring rotates round and gives information back to the controller or your machine to say when it's to stitch i'll give you an example i'm moving it backwards and forwards and that needle is going up and down however if i lift the encoder up so no information is being fed back and i move the machine up and down there's no stitch being made no stitch at all if i rotate that gently it then starts to form a stitch well that's stitching on the spot which is no good to anybody so this little encoder really has one thing to do in its life and if it could talk it would say stitch stitch so that when you move the machine it's forming a stitch just switch that off one of Jacob's recent quilts about a queen size quilt reasonable pattern on it nothing too dense it was just over 40,000 stitches and we're going to talk about being set at 12 stitches to the inch so 40,000 stitches at 12 stitches to the inch works out and I love maths just over 90 yards and I'm sure you all know that an American football pitch is 100 yards long so if you take that pattern and stretch it out in one length you'd expect this machine to stitch it's 12 stitches to the inch for 90 yards and it will do it but when we've got a missed stitch there we'll point you to three different things to look at the first question we'll say has the needle punctured the hole and which it hasn't and generally speaking when we ask that question people are a bit sort of what what, what do you mean has it punctured the hole and they go away and have a look and they come back and go no there's no hole in it so three things to look for the first thing I know you are all diligent people and when you finish quilting at the end of the day you clean your machine down and you get your paintbrush out and you clean the lint and the fluff and everything out of the way I know you all do that there is a possibility when you're doing that that you're thinking about oh what's my next quilt oh what's time what, well, I'll get it for tea oh I've run out of milk I'll go down and do the shopping and you just do it automatically and you can with your brush just put a little bit of pressure on that cable and it can just pull it out a little bit and if it's not making a perfect connection it will break the connection between there so the first thing we're going to get you to do is press that connector back in just to make sure it's home but before you press that and shoot the machine all the way there just put a, your finger there a little bit of pressure on it and then with your thumb just press that cable in that's not moving because we know it's okay that's the first thing we're going to get you to check the second thing and you will have heard this a hundred times Andrew Weaver on his Quilting with Confidence maintenance manual um, talk told you to get some wipes he uses his Clorex which is sort of really for America really we don't really get it over here we've got the Dettol wipes same sort of thing clean down the tracks make sure they're perfectly clean I'm going to embarrass Jacob there look bit of muck in there we get to clean these tracks we also get you to just lift that up gently just up and down motion it's sprung loaded it's strong enough to do what it needs to do but it's not strong enough to be manhandled all over the place just clean around that o-ring and clean around that o-ring just have a look at it are there any cracks in it is it broken because they have been broken before no cracks or breaking it looks okay and then that should sort your problem out now I'm a hands-on person I love an explanation as to why things happen so I've explained here what's going to happen that's your o-ring which is just under an inch in diameter when it's pushed on to the encoder it stretches out a little bit and it 
grows just a little bit, still just under an inch. And those who like maths will know that the diameter of that, multiplied by pi, works out about three and one eighth of an inch. That's the amount that it will rotate. Now I want to mark for my 12 stitches to the inch every twelfth of an inch. That's difficult to see. So I managed to get hold of this wheel. It's off my son's rig that he uses for his husky dog training. He won't know I've got this because he won't be watching this, but if he is watching it, then it will go back in one piece, Luke. So I'm just going to get a pen. This is now your encoder. I've got a line drawn here. And we're going to start rotating that. It rotates from the centre and it goes along stitch, 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 stitch. You get what I'm on about. So where it should stitch, you're getting a perfect formation of stitching. However, if you've got lots of dust and fluff, and I'm exaggerating here, is a piece of wadding. So put that on there, just above that second line down. And this is like your car driving along a gravel track and you come to a stop sign. You just need to put your foot on the brake a little bit more because the car's moving a bit quicker and the friction between the tyre and the surface isn't what it should be. And what will happen is it will slide just a little bit more. So stitch, 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 stitch. So it can't form itself. Occasionally it will form itself properly. And then it will move along a little bit more. So you can see there, you've got irregular stitches happening. That's not what we want. They're all over the place. And then, We get our O ring. I'll just get this photograph, Jacob. That's fair. That's the O ring that I've showed you. It looks perfectly good. This, believe it or not, is a bad O ring. I'll just get a photograph up. I'll try again. It doesn't recognise me. <laughs> can you see that? I can see that. There we go. That's what's happened to the O ring. And how you do that is you just finger and thumb and pull it that way. We can't pick that up on there, but that, all those splits in the end there, is it degrading and breaking down. And that's what that looks like in there. Now those little bits in the O-ring, here's another one I've prepared. That's the same on the wheel. And there is that little split. And that's, I've just shoved a bit of wadding in there, but that's the equivalent of the lint and the fluff and all that's going on there. Worst possible, you've got a split. We have had people ring up that have got it split. So let's show you what happens there. That will rotate and it'll make a good contact. Then it goes on and it'll slide until it gets traction and then to make its next stitch there. So you then got a skip stitch there. The other way that can happen is with threads. I borrowed this from the kitchen. They know about this. So where is the start on here? That sounds really me. <laughs> so stitch, 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 stitch. Piece of thread. Can't make the stitch. It should drive over it. If it does, it's going to make a short stitch. But more often than not, that will slide. It'll slide on that thread until it gets over to make the next stitch. And then it'll carry on stitching beyond there. So you're going to get that loop again. It's a skipped stitch. And that's why you get skipped stitches with your O-ring that's in poor condition that needs replacing. So you've got slight splits in your O-ring that's gathered bits of fluff and dirt. Or 
the regular stitches where you haven't got a good surface for it to roll on. Now, when we go and do services, service calls on machines, Jacob usually works at the front of the machine and I work at the back of the machine. And I generally check all the encoders out and I will always replace the O-rings. And the way I think of it is this. If your machine goes down with these problems with the stitches, it's going to take you about an hour, an hour and a half to phone somebody up to calm down, to stop panicking and get some help and support. The price of replacing those two O-rings is about the price of a large cup of coffee from Costa or Starbucks. It would be Starbucks. Starbucks. <laughs> Starbucks, okay, we've got Costa over here. But the coffee shops are available. That's if they were open. And is an hour, an hour and a half of your time worth a large cup of coffee? It's worth more than that. And maybe this isn't in any of the manuals. For those of you who've got a name for your machine, give it a birthday. Get it a nice cupcake or something like that. Put a candle in it. Light the candle. Come along and sing to your machine. Sing to it. Happy birthday. Blow out the candle. The machine can't eat the cake. So you eat the cake and then you replace the O-rings on it. It will thank you and produce wonderful stitches. At one of the dealer conferences, we were talking around um, one evening in a, in a bar, I think it was. Um, we were only drinking lemonade, I assure you we were. <laughs> and we got talking about the O-rings and the dealers who dealt with the southern states of America where it's dry found that they needed to replace the O-rings far more than in the northern states <coughs> of America where they had a bit more change in the weather. In this country, we tend to find that those machines that are in um, garages, outbuildings, where there's a fluctuation in temperature, the O-rings break down far quicker than those machines that are in shops or in a place where they, there's more of a constant temperature. I hope this has been helpful to you, just to explain what's going on. It can easily be solved. Sometimes checking those three things out will not solve the problem. And that's when you need to talk to your dealer and sometimes you will find that the encoder is breaking down they do change the fact that the last service call we did before the lockdown we had to change the encoder there and we also had to change the cable that was the older cable um, it looks perfectly good to us and that was the new cable that one wouldn't work the new one did just a case of plugging them in and it worked I suppose with all things, it will break down eventually, but this machine was a 2005 machine and it hadn't seen a Gamel service engineer ever. So it had done really well. So thank you folks for tuning in. I hope you found this useful. Wish you all well, everybody. Stay safe. Really do appreciate all the emergency services and everything they're doing, whatever country you're in. Lockdown is difficult for us all, but it will end one day and we'll be able to go and hug all our loved ones that we've missed out on hugging and spend time with them and have a good celebration. Meantime, stay safe, look after yourselves. God bless you all. Thank you ever so much. Uh, sorry to interrupt the end oh. ending. Yes, it does just simply roll on and off. Um, what else is happening right now? There's something else happening, isn't there? Oh, <laughs> sorry, I've got to tell you two things. One, tune in again at 10.30 in the morning, Central American time, and 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And also, there's the virtual quilting... Virtual quilt show. The virtual quilt show. <laughs> they came on at 8.30, so they might have stolen some of my followers, but never mind, <laughs> I'm not bitter about it at all. If you've entered quilts in there, I wish you all very best in there. There's some cracking lessons going on there there's some amazing people worth signing up first i think it's 40 dollars or something like that you know it's nothing it's from 40 dollars yes. sorry from yeah. 40 dollars but you know that's nothing to get some expert information worth signing on for and, and enjoying yourself sorry was there any questions um looking through not that many questions I'll just show you how that quickly goes on the o-ring then yeah that's the o-ring that's on there just pull it down comes off Put the new o-ring on i usually put my finger underneath it just slide a little bit because you've got to pull it a bit and there we are there if i switch that back on 
It's as simple as that. Oh, one other thing. <laughs> if you change your O-ring, like we've changed that one, usually you change your O-rings and there's a bit of a panic going on. You put your O-ring down and you've got the good one. At the end of the day, you're thinking, which was the good and which was the old? I urge you to get hold of it like that and pull it and find the one that's let you down, throw it away. You don't want to take that one and put it back on your machine and give you problems again in the future. Thank you so much, folks. Take care. Thank you for looking after us, Ashley. Bye, everybody. Bye.